Hello everybody, today I'm going to show you how to make a task in Scratch, like this one. This task is going to be backpackable and very easy to modify. Let's get into it. So the first thing you want to do is find a project that you would like to task. In this tutorial, I'm going to use this platformer. Remix the project. After you have remixed the project, create a new sprite and name it TAS. Open the code editor and add a when green flag clicked block. Let's create some new variables. The first variable is going to be called play for all sprites. The next variables you're going to be making are going to be named after the keys you want to task. For example, left arrow, right arrow, Make as many as you need, and make sure they're for all sprites. Once you are done with all of that, make your last variable. Name it TASIDX, for this sprite only. We are also going to be making a list to store inputs. Make a list, and name it TAS. The next thing you are going to do is find the game loop. Find the input scripts, the movement scripts. Replace the if key pressed with whatever the key variable equals one. So for example, if key left arrow pressed is the input, you will change it to if left equals one. After we're done with this, we're going to start coding our task recorder. I made a few mistakes while recording this, but I'll tell you how to fix them. So start by deleting all in tasks. After that, add if else play equals zero, put that delete all block in there, not in the else spot. Reset your input variables by setting them all to zero. After that, for each key you want to TAS, add an if key pressed and set the corresponding variable to one. After that, you'll simply join them all together and add them to the list. Ugh, I almost forgot. Add a forever loop to the beginning of the if-else block. And put the variable resetters at the beginning of the forever loop. And there we go! All the player's movements should be recorded into the list. Now we're going to learn how to play the movements back. But first we should hide the input variables since we don't really need to see them. So start at the else part of the if else block and set task idx to one. And I made a mistake here. So instead of an if, add a repeat until and make it repeat until task idx is greater than the length of tasks. Now what you're going to do is reset the input variables again, but in the repeat until block. Now we are going to read the task list. Be ready for this because this is going to take a while. Add an if letter one of item task idx of task equals one. Set whatever input you put here first to one. Now, you're going to repeat this with the rest of the ones you put here and continue adding one to the letter of block. We will finish the loop by changing task idx by one. Add a stop block after the loop to stop the project when the task is finished. We can hide the task list because we don't really need to see it. Now, set the play variable to zero and record your movements. When you're finished recording your task, stop the project and set play to one. Your project should start playing itself. Woohoo, we did it. But this just records our movements. 
What if we want to be like these guys who speedrun games to the human limit? These guys slow down the game so much, then speed it back up. We will be using Frame Advance. That allows us to play our project frame by frame to allow maximum control. So let's get coding. Find your game loop and add an if else play equals zero block. In the other spot, copy the game loop and add a wait until block to the if block. Make it wait until the key you want the frame to advance is pressed. I will use E. Add the same thing below it except make it wait until not the key you want is pressed. Drag your copied game loop in the middle of them. Finally, head to the task sprite. At the beginning of the if block, add a wait until block in the forever loop like you did previously. And at the end of the loop, add the wait until not block. There we go! When play equals zero, it is in record mode, and it should do frame advance. When play equals one, the task should play the recording. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions about this, let me know in the comments. In the description, I will leave a link to the project in this video and the tutorial project. And please give me suggestions for future videos in the comments. Thank you and have a good day.